You're listening to Let's Talk Sustainable Business. Hello, my name is Uwe Schult and it's a pleasure to welcome you to our podcast series, Let's Talk Sustainable Business. It is brought to you by the Conference Board Global Sustainability Center. And today I'm welcoming back Marcia Balestiano from Relix to continue our conversation about the relevance of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals for business. First, let me briefly introduce our guest to you. Marcia is the Global Head of Corporate Responsibility at Relix, previously in parts known as Reed Elsevier, and today it's more than a publishing house, it's a provider of global information-based analytics. If you would like to know more about Marcia or Relix, I recommend our last podcast where we spend uh, some time getting to know Marcia. Now we would like to uh, continue our conversation about the UN SDGs as uh, we will use that abbreviation throughout the podcast. Uh, and um, I would like to ask Marcia, um, when you um, remember back when the in 2015 the uh, the SDGs were published um, and uh, they were of course designed to be uh, uh, nation targets for states um, I observed that companies were struggling how to define the, the meaning for their own business and they quite often just had the reflex to look at their existing um, activities and map them against the SDGs. Uh, did you have the same impression? Well, I think that's the starting place that you need to look at where you align with the 17 goals. And I think that's, that's a great place to begin, but you can't stop there. There has to be this idea of doing something additional because our business as usual is not going to cut it. These are very ambitious goals. We have a tight time frame, and in fact, you know, we're recording this in 2020. We've got 10 years, and we know that we're behind on an, on so many of the measures. So we have to be looking at what it's going to take and how we can contribute as businesses to raise our game. Yeah, when uh, you you're absolutely right, but uh, you, you know. I'm, I'm sometimes thinking about when I look at the ambitious targets uh, the nations have agreed to, and if they would only uh, do a part of that, that requires huge investments and, um, and initiatives, and companies can participate in these initiatives. They can do that and grow their business and contribute at the same time to the achievement of the goals. But the question is then, of course, um, how to do that. Yeah, um, well, I think that uh, that is a very key point, is the funding gap for the SDGs. Um, and uh, I think it's um, UNCTAD uh, World Investment Report um, in terms of the, the financing um, and, and others. Uh, you know, the UN has cited something like a $2.5 trillion annual uh, financing gap for the SDGs. And so uh, governments are going to have to step up to put more money on the table to really see a big movement. Um, and that effort needs to be mirrored by the investments that companies are making where it's relevant for them to do that. So when you were mentioning about 2015, um, that particular day that uh, the nation states were meeting at the UN, um, I was across the street at one UN plaza because um, for Relax we um, introduced a, a report, a free report called a Sustainability Science in a Global Research Landscape. So we didn't know all that much about the SDGs, but we had a kind of um, overall sense of, of what they would entail. And we just wanted to look at the state of science um, and knowledge that would be needed to drive these SDGs forward. So that for us, given the nature of what we do at Relics was a starting point, 
But when I was sitting in the audience, uh, listening to my colleague, uh, Richard Horton, uh, Dr. Horton, who is um, the editor of The Lancet, who presented the findings of the report, I was found myself thinking, oh gosh, okay, this is a beginning. Um, and then now the clock is ticking. What are we going to do about this and what's relevant for our business? So um, in 2017, we launched something called the Relix SDG Resource Center. And the idea here is about curating content from across our business. Uh, we will have, uh, because we have Elsevier, which is science, um, LexisNexis Risk Solutions, which is focused on uh, fighting fraud and other crime, uh, looking at protecting society. Um, we have LexisNexis Legal and Professional, which is looking at fostering the rule of law and access to justice or fostering communities with our events business. We have one of the world's largest events companies. Uh, we, we will have something that is relevant um, in each one of these areas. So with that thought in mind, um, that's how we began. Um, so we launched this free resource for the world, the Relix SDG Resource Center. So it's our content as well as content from various partners, um, the majority of which are from within the UN system, like the UN Global Compact, the business arm, if you will, of the UN. So um, this, this has been where we have kind of uh, focused our energies given what we do and I think we're a bit unique in that we do have you know a show or articles or tools that relate to these various uh, 17 goals but even so we still for the public objectives that we that we uh, put out to the wider world which we do each year and then we have longer run sort of aspirations again which are in the public domain for the uh, 2030 timeline, we are um, looking at, you know, digging in to the ones that really map to those areas of mm. our business. You see, you, you, you mentioned in the beginning a word, um, you know, when you looked at this, you talked about the relevance uh, of the SDGs for your business. And I think this is uh, an, an important point because in the beginning, there seemed to have been a competition be between some uh, people in companies trying to map as many things they do as to as uh, m pro possibly all 17. And I think the point is you should think about where you're going to make a contribution, where you will have the largest impact. And that focus will help to actually make a true impact. Uh, and f from your side is your capabilities around information and research um, will actually provide exactly that. Isn't that a, a learning that other companies can take on board as well? Look at your capabilities, look for what is really material and focus on that? Yes, I think, you know, we there's been a lot of talk um, in recent years um, and accelerating uh, as more stakeholders, including investors, are prioritizing ESG, environmental, social governance criteria, as they look at both the financial and the long-term sustainability of a company um, that, they're, that they are recognizing um, and asking uh, companies to um, share uh, what they are doing. And I think, as you say, it is incumbent to really hone in on the areas where you think that, again, that it's not just uh, doing what you always used to do and then showing how that marries up, but you know, really thinking about where you can set goals um, in terms of making an impact toward the SDGs. And I think there's, there's a lot of good that can come out of that. There's uh, good in terms of how you talk with your um, with customers. So for example, we have um, an SDG working group where we bring together uh, various colleagues, um, including those that are customer facing. So we can say, right, this, this product of ours is really great, um, but let's also talk about you know, who we are as a business, why this SDG agenda matters to us, here's what we're doing about it and tell us what you are doing. Um, in many instances, our customers are very sophisticated in their um, work on the SDGs, but in some instances they may not be. So it creates an opportunity 
for shared dialogue. You can get closer to your customers. Um, and not only will you um, ingratiate uh, yourself uh, with the um, investors and analysts who are prioritizing um, ESG and the link to the SDGs. For example, in the United Kingdom, where we're listed on the FTSE uh, share index, uh, the Responsibility 100 index was released uh, last year, looking um, to rank the FTSE on their uh, performance on the SDGs. So, you know, that is um, something that that investors will be looking at, but it also helps us with our customers. It's a great way to engage our employees, both prospective employees and uh, existing ones are want to work for good companies and, and being able to articulate about the SDGs and to get excitement and buy-in around this agenda is a really great opportunity. Um, and, it, and it goes on in terms of having you know, so-called license to operate with your communities. And it, it really um, you know, can be a, a great way to kind of crystallize action around uh, corporate purpose. Yeah, so I, I think you've just described very well that SDGs are not a side issue, which you sort of talk about as well, but it's integrated in all your business activities, and you describe this e extremely well. Uh, I would like to hear a little bit more about um, your resource set there, because that is not also uh, also a nice demonstration of that integration, but it's also something that a lot of our listeners could actually use and benefit from. So can you describe this a little bit more? What is there, how you can access it and all that? Yeah, so um, we, we actually, um... We're interested in illuminating the SDGs for everyone through the uh, free Relax SDG Resource Center. Um, it's a great way for us to assemble and curate you know, leading edge articles, reports, tools, events, videos, legal practical guidance from across Relax to advance um, awareness and understanding on the SDGs. It's you know what we're what we're good at, um, and and I, I think you know again what we were saying just keep coming back to that point that companies need to figure out what they're good at, and and for us you know um, this uh, interplay between uh, information uh, is really critical. So one of the things, for example, that you can find on the homepage is the SD, SDG News Tracker, which our colleagues at LexisNexis Legal and Professional built for us, and um, you can get news on the SDGs, um, searching of millions of articles that are published daily across uh, more than 75,000 news sources in all the six UN languages and, Uwe, you'll be pleased to know, plus German. Um, <laughs> so there, it's um, a, a way for us to, to showcase um, knowledge that can be useful to anyone that would happen to be there um, or, or be looking for that, whether they're students or they are people who are conducting research or you just want to understand what the latest is on a particular topic. And for the news tracker, you can look at that by keyword, but you can also look at that in just honing in by SDG um, or by geography and then SDG. Um, and you can uh, get up to the minute news as well as over the last 30 days. So um, it's something that we're really proud of um, and that we want to make sure gets wider take up. Um, we really are interested in growing the amount of content that we have on the site. So we have a publicly stated goal this year to get from about a thousand content sources um, to increase that by 25% at least uh, by the close of 2020. So we are, we are working behind the, the scenes um, in order to do that because the more content we have, the richer mm. it is. And then we're also introducing um, podcasts and, and so forth. Um, and in fact, um, one is relating that um, we were able to do last week, uh, interviewing uh, one of our colleagues who is the founding editor um, of the Lancet infectious diseases. So that was really fascinating to have a conversation with um, with him around you know what he saw as 
um, the the challenges um, in in addressing the disease, but also you know what the opportunities might be um, in, in relation to that. And that was uh, John McConnell. So um, we just need to keep keep doing that because that's our sweet spot. You know, we we see ourselves as the world's knowledge company. Um, so we need to make knowledge available. Now, you, you make me now curious when I listen to this. This is a spectacular tool and, and, and a lot of work has gone in, into it and continues to go into it. How do you actually convince, um, you know, for example, your chief financial officer that you would do something like that um, and, um, you know, not generate revenue from it? Well, I think that you know this this won't break the bank um we we are a commercial enterprise um as all companies are and we need to be uh we we believe in being responsive to all our stakeholders including our investors um, but it's a wonderful shop window for the company and i think when we originally went to senior leadership um and said oh We'd like to like to do this. Um, I don't know that they fully understood what it was that we were creating, but um, we've kept our senior leadership involved um, and our board engaged as well. And it's been incredibly positively received because um, our senior leaders also want to work for a good company. And um, there's a growing recognition that if you want to be around um, in 2030 and 2050 and beyond, you really have to be thinking about um, your impact on society. And, and that's going to underpin for us, you know, um, the, the things that we decide to engage in. So an example, um, you know, I mentioned that uh, in the last podcast that, you know, we have uh, transitioned our business to one that is a digital business uh, you know in 2000 it was already probably quite edgy that we had about 22 percent of our turnover from online but last year it was 75 percent so um it is uh you know this is uh going to be a trend that accelerates um, and, and i think the current crisis highlights just how important technology is to us. But increasingly, we use things like um, machine learning and um, AI to inform um, customer decisions. We're creating tools that enable them to hopefully make better decisions. One of the things that we're working on um, right now is um, a good AI policy so um, that we can uh, you know, a responsible AI policy. So these are the kinds of things that um, are relevant to our business and our, our leaders understand um, and have been supportive about. Hmm. I understand. I mean, le let me be a little bit flippant on this, but uh, couldn't you say that instead of spending a lot of money on some sort of promotional videos showing your capabilities, by actually doing something extremely useful like the UN SDG Resource Center, you actually demonstrate uh, to your customers and your potential customers the capabilities you've got. So this is uh, bringing your capabilities to bear and having a benefit for the own company as well. Is that uh, a way that you could express it? Uh, I think so. We we are uh, primarily serving professional customers across probably almost every industry that you can think of. Um, we have uh, within read exhibitions something that is a bit more consumer facing in Comic Con, which is a, a show, mm -hmm. a kind of global phenomenon of engaging uh, people um, from all uh, walks of life um, in different geographies around their passion for characters from film and comic books, etc. But um, yes, I think uh, being able to to create a, a, a portal where we can showcase these different aspects of the company are, are has has been incredibly good. So there's a you know there is a kind of a win win in terms of uh, being able to show that we're really serious about the SDGs, that we really want to do our part. And also it's a great opportunity if somebody 
is able to see something mm. uh, from the Lancet um, and then you know want to dig in a little bit further and become a, co a customer of the Lancet, that's really fabulous. Um, and we hope that it will that it will work that way. But um, you know it's 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 part of part of the contribution that 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 we need to make. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I, I get that. But you, you, you also do a something else, which uh, you call the inspirational days. Can you talk about that one as well? Uh, um, I find absolutely. That yeah. So, um, so actually, we launched the SDG Resource Center at the first um, uh, inspiration day that we did in London. And the idea was really about using our convening power again as as a business to reach out to a range of stakeholders, you know, business, government, investors, academia, uh, youth, NGOs, um, to look at um, issues around advancing the SDGs. So we, we did the kind of general one, um, showcasing the launch of, of the Resource Center in 2017. 2018, we looked at um, technology to and the role that that needs to play in advancing the SDGs. And we did that in Silicon Valley. Um, and then we also have looked at partnerships for the SDGs um, in Amsterdam. Uh, last year, we, we were in Delhi and our theme was around sustainable cities and communities. And we were looking at the interconnection with the other 16 um, SDGs. So. Mm. Uh, including good health and well-being and the rule of law. So um, being in a place like uh, India was uh, very powerful because we it also gives uh, it's a great learning opportunity for us because we are hearing about the issues that are relevant in that particular jurisdiction. Um, and we're able to engage a wide range of partners. And the idea is really about inspiring action. It's really not so much about um, educating the uninformed about the SDGs, but kind of mobilizing the choir. Mm -hmm. So we all need to take some time out and and uh, refresh. And in fact, I was talking uh, with someone recently who said, uh, they, they recently transitioned to a, a, another role, but where they are trying to embed the SDGs. And um, this, uh, this person was saying, I'm used to talking to people who kind of get this agenda. And, but um, here, uh, I've had to do a lot of soul winning. And, um, but even the soul winners need some inspiration. And that's the idea. Can we make um, introductions and engagement that can help to inspire uh, business action on the SDGs. That's the goal. Sounds to me like you are really engaging uh, towards the, the uh, goal 17, uh, the networking. Yes, that 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 certainly it, and and also kind of digging in um, and looking um, in more detail. And um, we we are interested in all of the SDGs. You know the ones that are most relevant for us. Um, we are things like SDG three, good health and well being. SDG sixteen, which is where the rule of law sits. Um, and again, you know we're setting publicly stated objectives in these various um, SDG areas. But by looking at SDGs that we're not as familiar with, it's really it's educational for us too. Yeah. Um, and we widen our network. Um, so the the goal for this year is to look at SDG 12, responsible consumption and production. Uh, we were hoping to go to South Africa um, and explore what this means in that context. But given the current situation, we may be needing to do this uh, virtually. And if that's the case, you know, it creates new opportunities. But those would still be an opportunity for us to hear from a wide range of people who can give uh, the participants uh, and ourselves uh, really interesting perspective and and also you know looking at where those shared interests lie to see where we can scale engagement together yeah and um, and actually doing it virtually is of course a, a hurdle but it might even broaden the audience so there is always uh, uh, between a hurdle there's also an opportunity. Now, thank thank you, Marcia, for um, really illuminating to, to us um, by applying the UN SDGs to your business. And you know, when you outside 
um, a business like yours, it doesn't lend itself easily to understand what the SDGs mean for you. And you made it really, really tangible. So uh, thank you for that. Um, but in the last podcast, we spent some time on talking uh, how the SDGs um, uh, can actually, um, or how the SDGs have a big relevance in in learning and uh, trying to prevent uh, um, about uh, pandemics. Uh, let's spend a couple of minutes on um, what companies can do in this context uh, in the COVID-19 crisis. Where, where is your thought there? Well, and I think um, when you look at the efforts that companies, uh, both multinationals and SMEs are making, it's very inspiring. So, so much of it is already going on, but that same process of kind of understanding what you're good at and how what you're good at can be mobilized to provide value um, in the coronavirus crisis, I think is the important step. Just as we were saying um, in our discussion so far that in terms of making a contribution to the SDGs, um, it's about you know understanding uh, where the expertise lies, you know, where is that contribution to society that a, that a business is, can make, and then how can you maximize that beyond the kind of basic level of activity that you are you're currently engaged in? Um, so for us, um, we have used the Resource Center. I mentioned about this podcast series that we have launched um, as part of that, um, and we will be adding to that. So yesterday, um, I interviewed. Um, the head of the Global Partnership for Sustainable Development Data, looking at the role that technology and data can play um, in not only addressing the, the crisis now, but in advancing um, the SDGs more generally. Um, but we um, have also launched a number of specific coronavirus resource centers, which can be found from the RELICS SDG Resource Center. So there's one uh, for, from the Lancet for the latest scientific knowledge. Um, and also we have made from Elsevier more generally, the Lancet is uh, uh, one of the publications within um, Elsevier. We have made um, all relevant content that we can find um, a freely available. Uh, we also are you know, looking um, across the other parts of our business. So our colleagues at LexisNexis um, uh, legal and professional have created a coronavirus media and news tracker, which is is, is pretty amazing. Um, looking at what they have been able to do uh, for the latest news, um, interactive charts on the way coronavirus is developing across the global media landscape in real time. But it's also, you know, colleagues um, within our risk business, uh, risk and business analytics. Uh, so, Sirium which is uh, for the global aviation industry. They have um, been looking at uh, the impact of the crisis, making um, information available. Uh, also, colleagues within that business unit um, from ICIS, which is uh, looks at sort of um, the development of markets and commodities pricing. Uh, one of the uh, key analysts there uh, came out with news that was covered in Forbes and Bloomberg this week that um, uh, greenhouse gas emissions in Europe will drop uh, probably about 24.5% by 2020 due to the lockdown, mirroring a 25% drop um, for, for China. So uh, you know, that is expertise and, and knowledge that we have and, and that we are making available. But even our read exhibitions colleagues, um, I was really struck by how our colleagues in Austria in, um, are uh, working with the city of Vienna to transform um, an, an exhibition space that we use into a hospital. So it's really happening uh, across our, our business as our colleagues are thinking about, you know, what do we, what do we do? How can we, how can we use that to make a positive um, impact in this really important time? That, that is really, really, really encouraging. And, and I must say, there are so many examples of companies uh, that have engaged and, and found ways of uh, um, helping to combat the crisis. Uh, it is it's just amazing. And it's not only 
large companies I, I, uh, I've seen here uh, in Germany, a very small business, it's only five people, uh, and they were doing uh, work around acrylic glass and they have just completely changed their production and they all they make is st uh, uh, stand up shields for supermarkets, banks and, and um, surgeries so that when people talk to uh, the staff there, there is this uh, shield against um, uh, um, transmission through droplets. So uh, <clears throat> I think that is extremely encouraging. But let's just spend uh, uh, a last minute on any final thoughts from you about the new um, normal once we will hopefully sooner rather than later exit this crisis? Well, there's certainly a lot of um, thinking around that. Will will some of the trends that we've seen play out past the crisis part of uh, you know what we find ourselves um, in, involved in now? So when we're all freely able to uh, move around, even if there's social distancing uh, over a, a period of, of months uh, ahead, will we see people continuing to work remotely, for example, and using technology to engage? You know, will that mean that uh, people won't be uh, traveling as, as much as they, they used to? And will that have a positive impact on, for example, um, carbon? Uh, hopefully, uh, we will see some of the re the really positive coming together. You know the idea that you know across geographies um, and across uh, different segments of society that we are all in this together. And uh, we've seen amazing examples of uh, goodwill and the best of of humankind. But I think it also is pointed to the fact that we have transitioned so quickly. And if we take that will and impetus to apply that to the SDGs, um, it shows it can be done. If we really want to make an impact on achieving this very important agenda for the world and for our, our you know, future, um, for our children and, and, their, um, and their offspring, that, that it can be done. And I hope that that, um, that incredible uh, effort that we've seen that can be achieved in a relatively small amount of time will persist and we will apply that capability to achieving the 17 SDGs. Thank you so much, Marcia, for um, a really uh, inspiring uh, half an hour about the SDGs and the business relevance. Uh, I think you have um, helped our listeners uh, to find their own way to engage um, and uh, work on these longer term goals. Thank you very, very much uh, indeed. Thanks. And uh, hope to see you soon in person again. <laughs> uh, to our listeners, if you've enjoyed this episode, please remember to sus subscribe to our podcast series or explore the entire catalog of our podcast programming from the conference board by visiting our website at tcb.org slash podcast. And for today, thank you very much. And looking forward to see you again in our next podcast uh, in, in a week's time. That was Let's Talk Sustainable Business.